Alright, welcome to Linux Bandits, Episode 1. Today, we're, I got, I got the usual gang of uh, bandits here on the show, and we're going to be talking about our favorite desktop environments. First, running sound, I've got Diego! Everybody clap your hands for Diego, thank you. Hello, right. friends, how are you? All right, and then I've got Jason. Hi, Jason. How you doing? Marcus, who's got his Linux new show, and believe me, if you are a show host on YouTube, believe me, he will spam you all over G+, <laughs> the minute you release a video. Yeah, absolutely. He is very good at that. And then we have Matthew Moore, Mr. Gizmo, 757. He's got all kinds of videos up. Ramsey, uh, hi, Ramsey. Hey. Did you ever put up another video besides that one you have up on YouTube? Well, the previous Hangout video that we did, I posted that, that up, yeah. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> oh, you have to stop somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, I didn't I'm mean to take it. I'm still working on a video. <laughs> right. Well, maybe you can put up a video about your favorite desktop environment. And we all know your favorite desktop environment is KDE. Why do you like KDE, Ramsey? Well, I like KDE because you can literally customize everything about it. And not only that, whatever features you're looking for, KDE already has it. Whether your panels to dodge windows or whether to have uh, desktop effects like comp is, only this, I mean, KDE is called KWIN. So whatever you're looking for, it's got widgets. It has everything. And I'm running KDE 4.10 right now on my Ubuntu 12.04 system, and I love it. Now, KWIN is pretty darn good, but you know what? The entire KDE suite just seems a little bit bloated to me. But, uh, you know, now that I have a quad core, you know, I should, I should have a look at, uh, KDE again. As a matter of fact, I had a request for the full Monty, uh, PC Linux OS, and I'm going to be looking at that this weekend. So I might take another look at that and see how that goes. Matthew, what desktop environment are you using? Well, I'm a fan of the Unity desktop. <laughs> yeah, it is a little controversial, but the reason why I like no, it is I'm because... No, oh, I'm kidding. Unity, Unity is pretty neat. And uh, as you yeah. guys have seen in my Ubuntu boot camp, we've uh, added some customizations to it. We're doing some tweaking with it. So for a lot of people, it is quite useful. Tell me about it. Well... One of the main reasons why I like it is because of the integration of keyboard shortcuts. I find that I can be very productive in that environment using the keyboard shortcuts because uh, once I get used to the keyboard shortcuts, they just come as second nature. You know, if I want to print something, I just hit a keystroke. If I want to open up an app, just another keystroke. The heads-up display is also pretty useful, and it's just... It's, it's a little unusual as far as desktop environments go, but... I can just find, um, I find myself to be a lot more productive in that environment than some of the others. Marcus, what you got? Hey, I'm a light desktop type of guy. I, I'm a mean sneaky girl, I'm like a house on fire, because we all like the LXD, um, XFCE type desktop sketcher. I'm actually trying out Wild iOS at the moment on day two, and I'm actually really enjoying it. So, something blank, something I can throw stuff on, something that doesn't take a lot of memory usage, and I'm just like, Peppermint iOS is actually a favorite of mine, actually. Now, so, uh, um, let me ask you, uh, what is the default uh, desktop that's coming on WattOS? Is that XFCE or LX? It's LXDE. So, um, he's done it from a mini ICO, and he's what he's done, he hasn't used Lubuntu. He's just kind of done it himself and thrown the LXDE on and themed the hell out of it. So it's actually quite nice to have desktop. Now, let me ask you, does LXDE support GTK3 theming? Don't think so. I think Mate does. I think Mate's actually a favourite desktop of mine. Mine. I think it's a quite light and it's getting getting better. And you can on Mate, but I'm not sure if you can on LXDE. I actually wouldn't mind if they upgraded LXDE a little bit because it's been getting a bit old now. They haven't done much for the last twelve months or so. But um, I never know. But actually, and is actually coming along quite nicely. It's a bit out of date, but it works. Everything on XFCE works. You don't get crashes. Nothing. Everything works. That's what I like about the light, the light desktop clients. Yeah, now, um, 
I've looked at Lubuntu and uh, other desktops that had LXDE on it, but I never really stuck around with it too long. I think mostly at the time that I was really looking at those, I was running uh, GNOME 2 and Pinguy OS, and I liked it for its customization. But then, when everything switched over to GNOME 3, I migrated over to XFCE because you could customize that. All right, Jason, your turn. What is your favorite desktop? Why do you like it? I, I use it cinnamon right now, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I like it because it's it's the closest thing to Windows that you know. That I, I come from Windows, so it, it it's almost what Windows should be. Now let me ask you a question: Are you running the latest 1.8? version of Cinnamon, or are you using an older version now? I don't know. I just installed Linux 15. Yeah, I installed it an hour ago. Okay, so you're running Linux Mint 15, and that has the latest version of Cinnamon on that. And let me ask you, are you experiencing any problems with it crashing? Because I, I had issues with some of the applets you know, the configuration settings didn't always work. And I uh, also had some problems. Uh, sometimes uh, Cinnamon would crash on me, especially when I was customizing it. Have you run into any problems like that yet? Or do you think they squashed all the bugs on that? So far, everything's great. Uh, everything's installed fine. I had, I don't even know what the program was called or what it was. Uh, I had, I only had one issue when I was updating, and it was like some sort of thing. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I just uninstalled it, and that, that cleared up my package manager again. So that was like the only issue I've seen so far, but so far installing all my past programs I use, uh, everything's working great. All right, awesome. All right, Diego, what desktop are you using, my friend? Hello, everybody. I'm using a KDE now. Boo, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> customize it. You can customize it the way you want, just like Rafa to say. You can also, if you want to leave it like, like you first see it, leave it, don't touch too much, you just leave it there, don't touch too much. But you can customize the way you want it. So, uh, I've tried before, uh, Num Classic, as like you said, I like it too. Uh, I've tried Unity, I have it on another laptop, I'm going to leave it to my sister. And, you know, I'm staying with KDE for now, and then if I find something, I better uh, change. Uh, right. Now, Linux will change. Are you using KWin or any uh, compositors with it? Compiz or KWin or anything like that? No, no the one that, that comes with it, uh, Plasma Desktop, just regular. Uh, I put a title doc to look at, but look at you know, look nice, but that's about it. I'm not, you know. All right, and I am running XFCE, and I think I'm addicted to it, um, namely because it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I like XFCE because that is easily customizable. Um, it supports GTK3 themes. As a matter of fact, every time on my show, you know, when I'm doing uh, something and I'm showing my desktop, I get a lot of questions. Well, what is that theme you're using? What is that cursor set you're using? Uh, say, that looks cool. What is that you're using on it, you know? And uh, I... I really like the XFCE because I've been able to, you know, do a lot with it. And not only that, but it's really easy to hide the panel and use something else, in which case I'm using Avant Window Navigator as my panel where I can quickly launch all of my applications that I'm using and uh, that sort of thing. And what have you got to say about that, Marcus? Uh, yeah, I agree. I actually think XFCE is one of the most stable desktop environments around at the moment. Um, you get the odd panel crash, but um, it's not, I mean, depending on what distro you're on, on if you're Ubuntu based, but Debian wise, it's pretty stable. As Key likes to say, it's stable, stable, stable. So if you're on Debian Weasley, it's probably the most stable desktop environment around, I think. Um, mate, I'm mate turning in, into that as well, but um, um, it's still a way away. And Cinnamon needs a bit of work, but never, I mean, who knows? I think Ramsey wants to say, uh, say a word. Well, what I was going to say about KDE, what I like about it is the fact that well, most of its programs are top-notch. K3B, KDE Live, I mean, it's uh, some of the best software available, and it uh, comes with KDE. So that's kind of why I choose KDE. And when speaking of the XFCE panel crashing, well, one of the great things about F XFCE, since we're talking about it, 
is the fact that it's easy, relatively easy, to get rid of the panel and just use a bot window navigator instead. Well, the thing is, um, I wasn't talking about the XFCE panel crashing. That never crashed on me. I was talking about Cinnamon. Pay attention! <laughs> <laughs> Get that sock out of your ear and listen, boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, j j just, <laughs> I I've had issues with cinnamon crashing on me and that sort of thing. But you know what? You're right about one thing. KDE has the mother load of applications that are constantly being updated. And, uh, and... You know, like the K3B is really good, but personally, I use XF Burn for burning my discs. But uh, Kadian Live, awesome video editor. But you know what? The nice thing is, you don't have to run KDE to have those applications running on your Linux desktop. You can choose any. You can choose components from any desktop. For instance, I'm running XFCE, but I'm not using Thunar for my file manager. I actually have the uh, Cinnamon uh, PPA enabled on my system so that I can run Nemo, which is the fork of the latest uh, Nautilus that GNOME is touting, and it gives you some extra features and that sort of thing. And because I was able to use the deconf editor, I was able to change the size of the thumbnails. So now my file manager is also my photo manager as well, because I have large uh, thumbnail images of uh, all of them, you know, and I can manage my photos within my file manager. I have all these extra programs to do this and do that and do this and do that when you can consolidate it all into one. You know, everybody um, everybody says they love the um, Thunderbird for uh, accessing their email. Well, I use my web browser for that. What do I need an application for handling email for, you know? When you can combine everything and, you know, that sort of thing. What do you, how do you see that, Ramsey? Well, I agree. I uh, go into Gmail on my web browser. I don't bother with Thunderbird and all that. But I guess for some people, they prefer having a, a separate client just so that they can manage the history settings better or something. Let me add something to that. On Thunderbird, there's a no you click on the in the email and it will give you the the actual email on the half page at the bottom. So that might that might be one of the options, one of the reasons why people like Thunderbird. You actually see the email once you click on it. You don't have to double click. Yes, but the the only thing is uh, a common trick that spammers are using is they will include uh, images in the emails, True. and there will be a code that lets them know that image with this number was accessed, and then they know that was a legitimate email that they used to be able to... Um, you know, and then of course they're going to sell your email address to other companies and that sort of thing. And so it's good to be yeah. able to, you know, have uh, the web based email. I like that because I have images shut off. Because, you know, if I accidentally open up a spam email message, not that I get much of them because I don't give out my real email address very often, you know, um, the un unlikelihood that that does happen, you know, they're not going to be able to detect that uh, I even opened that email in the first place. Matthew, your turn. Well, just to add something about Thunderbird there, about uh, images being loaded by default, um, the latest version of Thunderbird, the um, at least for Gmail, the, the default setting doesn't allow the default loading of those images unless you specify. Uh, you can go into the um, About Config settings and change that, but uh, one of the main reasons why I do prefer to use Thunderbird over uh, going through the web browser is, well, for one, it's less steps. And for two, there are plugins and things available for Thunderbird where I can automate my uh, inbox. So where when I'm sitting on the desktop, I can have a notifier running and it'll immediately pop up as soon as I receive it uh, instead of having to just uh, view a big long list of emails um, at one time when I finally decide to open up Gmail in the browser. So it does have as it does have advantages um, over the web um, interface, but you no, know, there are also advantages to the web interface as well. I guess it really all comes down to preference and how you use your email. Marcus. 
So yeah, sorry, carry, right, carry on. Um, yeah, I, I mean, she, she, she I just, I'm sorry, I was just doing stuff. But she, uh, um, That's why I did it. <laughs> Gmail, actually, I was looking at Gmail, it's just had a revamp actually. Um, they've actually updated the whole Gmail interface, which is interesting if you haven't got the update yet. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, th I think I use Gmail all the time, so um, I don't actually use Thunderbird anymore. Uh, I used to use Thunderbird all the time in, on Linux distros, but um, it's just become a bit obsolete now, you don't really need to use it. Yeah. Um, and um, But yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, desktop environments, I, I do agree with KDE. I, I, I get back to the desktop environment topic. Um, I think KDE's, the memory usage has gone down. I think um, I was talking to a KDE developer last night in Mumble for about an hour, and um, um, he's a 65-year-old that's been working quite a bit with KDE, and um, and he was telling me how they've done, you know, what their plans are, and etc. And I think KDE's actually come quite on quite nicely. The 4.10 release is actually a very nice release, etc. That was off top, but off top. Not yeah, we did on. veer off topic, but this is a Google <laughs> Hangout. We're supposed to veer off topic from time to time. Ooh, Carry on, sorry. That noise. I'll pay more attention. <laughs> what do you guys think about GNOME? Ramsey. Well, I liked GNOME back when it was in GNOME 2, but then again, I really didn't use the GNOME panel. I just used Docs instead of the GNOME panel. So either way, I just no longer use GNOME, period. So where it goes is fine by me because I just won't use it. But the problem is, is that there are a lot of other desktop environments that are based off of GNOME, such as Cinnamon, such as Unity, and those other things. So hopefully they won't be too much affected by the decisions GNOME makes. Mate, mate, mate. And that looks kind of cool. I just looked at uh, Linux Mint 15 with the Mate desktop, and I actually thought that looked kind of sharp. Uh oh, Marcus! <laughs> um, Fedora's actually come out with a Mate version. Boo, Fedora! Oh, never mind, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I did try that, actually. Actually, look, look I mean, I, I'm not an expert on Fedora, I must admit. But, um, I mean, I think a lot, a lot of distros are switching to, to Mate. I think it's quite a stable type of desktop. Um, low memory usage, you can get things done on it. Uh, it's very, very LXD, uh, XFCE like. Um, it's got a nice like interface. They're, they're upgrading it all the time. I know, I've actually spoken to some Make developers recently too, and I know there's, yeah, there's about there's a half a dozen of them there are working on it all the time. So um, I think that's actually going to be a big desktop environment for Linux. I think in the next year or two. My, just offhand, yeah, just my, my my opinion. All right, and um, now uh, I suppose we can add an air of controversy to this. But before I do, everybody that says they see that I'm smoking, this is water vapor. And uh, thanks to this modern day miracle from aquavaporsig.com, this is the Ego Tank. This is an electronic cigarette. There is no smoke. It's all water vapor. And thanks to this modern day miracle, I have not had a cigarette since February 1st of this year. I've saved so much money. I'm not smoking anymore. And this is the only thing that really satisfies. Now, let's move on to our next topic, and that is, which desktop environment do you absolutely despise, and why? We'll start off with you, Ramsey. Well, I didn't like Unity when it first came out, but if I had to choose a desktop environment I really, really, really don't like, I would have to go with... Uh, um, what is it? Open box. Why? I just can't use it. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, you know, and the thing is, it just has not worked for me. I'm sorry. It just hasn't. Open box. Uh, I actually liked it when I was running Arch Linux. I used that as a sort of <clears throat> fallback mode. When I had the Compass Fusion icon at the top of the screen, I, I could switch to OpenBox. And uh, I loved it because uh, I could free up all kinds of resources, especially when I was slicing up video and that sort of thing. And uh, I actually thought OpenBox was quite nice. Although I will admit, I really didn't care for the, you know, a lot of uh, these distributions that come out with uh, OpenBox will have like tint as a panel and, uh, well, that's what that's what I'm referring to. That's yeah, and what the, I'm referring to. Yeah, and and tint really, um, they they don't have a graphical configurator for it. You got to sit down and type in lines of code and 
yada, 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 to do some customizations with it. So I kind of dropped that one like a hot potato. Matthew! I really don't like uh, Gnome 3 with stock Gnome Shell. I know you can do uh, you can make changes to the Gnome Shell environment to make it better, but I don't know. It's um, if there was one thing that I could do, I, I think I would like to ask the developers on the Gnome team why the heck do they keep uh, removing functionality from that platform? <laughs> it seems like uh, it seems like making it worse is their ultimate goal here. <laughs> you know, and this is a thing that really bugs me. Bugs me bugs me. You know, these software developers now are developing programs in such a way to take away the user's freedom to customize it and make them make it their own. Uh, and so, you know, they're trying to like, quote unquote, dumb down things sort of like uh, many applications in Windows are dumbed down. I mean, even Android is dumbed down now, you know. If you want to really get the most out of your Android device, you got to root your phone before you can really do anything fun with it. And that is a sad thing. And, you know, and uh, this could be, this, this could be uh, a case where we're seeing that the Linux desktop is being dumbed down. Would you, would you subscribe to that, Matthew? Um, yeah, I guess I could agree with that, but that there may be a reason behind that. As uh, the Linux desktop is becoming more popular, maybe you know there might be a possibility that maybe they're trying to cater to new users that might not have the skill or um, uh, you know skills to just figure something out at first glance. Maybe dumbing it down it might be necessary to get new users to uh, feel comfortable in the environment. But uh, more advanced uh, and more experienced Linux users like myself and others, uh, it just it, it does just doesn't feel right to have that lack of functionality. Marcus is typing Bodhi, Bodhi, Bodhi. Yeah. Bodhi, <laughs> Bodhi uh, Ramsey Bodhi. was mentioned. We was, was just talking about uh, me seventeen. Um, actually, X seventeen is coming along quite nicely. I don't know how stable the stable version is, though. I was actually more stable a year ago, but um, we won't get into that. I have spoken to Jeff. Uh, who well, I could answer that question for you because I've installed uh, the latest Bodhi on a friend's laptop of mine, and E17 is actually quite stable, and it's quite usable now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's well, a lot easier to use. I spoke to Jeff about a month ago on the Hangout, the creator of Bodhi. He was saying he was saying that um, how it was coming along quite nicely, and I tend to agree with him. So, um, and he was saying he was having some issues with um, the three point eight kernel with where it was, but um, I think he's fixed most of that now. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to have a look at Bodhi, it's a black canvas. You just basically just add stuff on. You can install stuff from their website, um, and you just basically just use Bodhi and install the stuff through the um, through the um, web browser and um, use Synaptic, and away you go. That's easy. Now, Marcus, you drifted off yes. topic there. Which desktop oh, environment do you really hate? <laughs> oh, I mean, um, I mean no, the desktop three. environment that really turns your blood black. Everybody wants to know. <laughs> Gnome 3 pisses, and Unity actually pisses me off. Um, I, 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 I just get, I just, I go and load in Ubuntu, I go, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this, and then the next thing I do, I'm loading the LXD desktop environment. It just, you know, I, I'm someone that, that I can't get into it. I, I know it's got better, it's improving, but it's just, I don't like the toolbar on the side. Um, I can't do much with that toolbar. I know you can theme Ubuntu as much as I like, but, um, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, uh, and Gnome pisses me off. <laughs> you talking I say, Gnome, they've brought Gnome to the cracks. Is, um, I mean, obviously Gnome's a bit dead as a desktop environment because everyone's forking it. Um, and if, I mean, Make 2 forked off Gnome. Uh, I'm, I'm, my mate's more forked off Gnome. Gnome, so was a couple others. So carry on, Spectre, but that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> bring well, on, bring on, Gnome. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of Gnome being forked, uh, KDE 3, back when it switched to KDE 4, a lot of people didn't like that. And so there's an actual KDE 3 fork out there called the Trinity Desktop Environment. I just never used it. Ah, I've never heard of that one. All right, Jason, your turn. Which desktop environment do you hate? And I mean, you hate it so much, you just want to send hate mail to the developers every single day until they fix it. 
It's just crap. I can't do uh, anything with it. I, it's not intuitive at all. You gotta move your your mouse mouse cursor over to the left top right just to pop out uh, a few programs that they thought that, that you like. Then you gotta go to that little bottom mic. I don't like it. It's crap. <laughs> That's really. Uh, and then and then sort of off topic, but like what Matt was saying. Um, I'm cool with them dumbing down the desktop because, like, I, I don't need customization. Uh, the extent of my customization is adding my five programs that I use to buttload, uh, on the quick toolbar thing. So, you know, I mean, that's as, and, and I can change my wallpaper. That's all I need, you know, and, and it works great. So, I'm sticking with, I just don't like Unity. I'm done. <laughs> okay, cool deal. <laughs> all right. And Diego, what desktop do you really hate? Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't like. It has to be. I don't like Windows 8. <laughs> you like Windows like, 8? Somebody like grab me a rope. We're gonna have a hanging today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I hear Ramsey that Windows 8.1 the update is gonna be a lot better. Well, if, if you have a tablet. Button, if you have a start button, but not a start menu. Yeah, apparently they're bringing the start button back, I think. There's no start it's menu. It's not productive. It's not productive. Uh, How can you uh, work finally, the, the, finally listened to the masses and they've decided, okay, we need a start button. Yes, but it's my understanding, <laughs> though, that the stop the, the, the start menu that they're going to give you isn't going to give you the same functionality that you had in Windows 7, so you're still going to have to spend 50 bucks to get the application from Stardock. Exactly. That's my point. It's going to be the same menu. It's going to throw you back to Metro Interface. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Don't, don't even get me started on Windows 8. <laughs> Your best video was on your best video spatula was on Windows 8, wasn't it? Didn't you have a spatula Windows show or something? Uh, actually, um, I reviewed. Um, I reviewed. Uh, oh God, what was it? The <laughs> uh, release candidate and then the uh, developers preview, and I didn't like either of them to be honest with you. But you know, well, the, Matt but, has some experience with Windows 8. But one thing you will never hear me say on my show, and, and, and in truth, I mean, I, I cut up a lot about it, and I joke and that sort of thing, but you'll never hear me say, don't use Windows, because, I mean, it is good in its own right. You know, um, they Windows has software that we just don't have in Linux, you know? Um, but the thing is, I found a lot of really great alternatives that I've been able to, you know, work with, and that sort of thing. Windows is good in its own right, and, um, you know, uh, they they used every malicious task they could think of to keep it that way, to keep it in everybody's homes, and now they're starting to lose their grasp at, you know, to tablets and um, and other mobile devices, and, you know, peop a lot of people don't really care for the new Windows 8, and that's perfectly fine. For those that don't want to use it, they'll use Windows 7. You know, we're not getting a huge exodus over to Linux because Windows 8, you know, uh, is the pits for many people, you know, but the thing is, uh, I'd like to think that we're educating, entertaining, and inspiring people, letting them know that Linux is out there, and uh, it functions very well for all of us, well, except for Diego. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, you'll never hear me say don't use a Mac. You'll never hear me say don't use Windows. But um, but I will suggest some reasons why I chose Linux. You know, as a matter of fact, um, my Welcome to Linux video is due for a um, an update. Of sorts, and so uh, I'll probably be doing uh, a remake on that one. Uh, and I'm going, you know, because now I've been using Linux full time as my only major operating system for the past two years, and it has been a magnificent learning experience. I learned more about computers using Linux than I have in all of the years of using DOS and Windows. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Linux is desktop ready, but the thing is, um, many people are gravitating over to mobile platforms now. You know, for a lot of people, that tablet is their home computer. 
why have a desktop when you can get your email, you know, just just holding a uh, mobile device like your cell phone, you know, you can get YouTube on your mobile device now. Why bother having a desktop now, you know? Exactly. That's one of, that's one of the reasons why the PC market went down like 15% this last year. But that mm -hmm. Well, anyways, Matthew Moore has some experience with Windows 8. Do you want to hear what he has to say, Patrick? <laughs> I'm dying to hear this. Well, my opinion on Windows 8 is it's kind of a mixed bag of chips. On a conventional keyboard and mouse desktop without a touch, it makes absolutely no sense at all. And speaking back to the dumbing down of desktops, it, I mean, it looks like Fisher Price built this thing. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> But um, <laughs> if, if you've never experienced Windows 8, uh, the modern UI, on a tablet, uh, in a tablet environment, you're really missing out. Uh, on a conventional uh, computer, Windows 8 absolutely makes no sense. But it really works exceptionally, exceptionally well on a tablet. And uh, I think that, uh, like, like you said, uh, Spatry, about tablets becoming more and more popular, uh, as they do, so will Windows 8, because in that environment, it works exceptionally well. The biggest problem with it in that environment, though, uh, there is kind of a serious lack of applications available compared to what you'll find on iOS and Android. But uh, I think Microsoft is doing the right thing for Microsoft. Uh, it's kind of a paradigm shift in um, the eyes of them. And... Right now, it's not very popular, no, but I think if they keep doing what they're doing uh, as mobile devices become more popular, I think we'll actually see more of Windows 8 and more people actually starting to like it um, as that style of computing becomes more popular. Uh, as long as it's being crammed down their throats and there's no other alternatives to compete with, yes, it will, but Android's up and coming now. You know, we're starting to see this now on uh, computers. They're actually shipping, uh, I understand it's HP, if I'm not mistaken. They are shipping a new laptop with Android on it. And uh, I've even been tempted to uh, see if I could find uh, Android OS as something that I could run in my virtual machine so I could uh, show that off on the show. Because uh, I would be very interested if I could just download Android OS on my, uh, into my virtual machine maybe access Google Play Store and uh, download apps I've already paid for and see if I could run them on my Linux box. That would be a really cool thing because i got some awesome games on here. You know, and uh, yeah, I would, yeah, I would love it if I could play them on my computer, you know, and I saw, I saw Jason smirking over there. What's up? No, no, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. You might actually be able to do that. There's uh, a project called Android X86. I've actually got a video on my channel where I actually run full-blown Android on my uh, laptop here. So you might actually be able to put it in the virtual machine and do exactly that. Does it have the Google Play Store app on it? It does. Oh, 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 I am so there. I am so there. I am going to check that out. You're going to have to send me a link to that so I can play with it. And if it does work, I'm going to put that one up on my show and let people know about it because that would be a great way to be able to access all of your applications and that sort of thing, you know, um, and play them in your Linux box. I've been looking for a way to do that for some time. So that sounds like a pretty good idea, Matthew. Yep, you can just Google uh, Android X86, and it should I'm be one of the first there. links. I am there. All right. Well, guys, I think we've run out of time here. We've had an interesting discussion. We went way off topic, but, hey, this is our first Linux Bandit show, and uh, you guys got to let me know what you thought of it. Uh, put it in the space below. Uh, if you have any ideas for the Linux Bandit show, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll uh, consider those topics. I'll bring it before my panel. Um, we're on uh, on these Hangouts all the time, and at the spur of a moment, uh, we'll decide to do a show like this, so we don't have any set schedule, and I think it's going to stay that way. So I think it's this is appropriately named <laughs> the Linux Bandits. So, all right, well, that's all we have for right now. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Marcus. You. I appreciate it.
Thank you, Matthew. Very fun. Thank you, Ramsey. Peace out, folks. And uh, thank you, all of you, for watching. And uh, hopefully our audio quality is a little bit better this time around. So, I'll, yeah, smash and grab. As soon as the show's over, then one of the guys has to leave here. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. Peace out. We'll see you next time. Thank you.